Sometimes, exploring means filling in the gaps. I'm author and researcher Mike Luoma. Finding possible large-scale stonework along Lake Champlain in Vermont, at Eagle Mountain in Milton, Niquette Bay in Colchester, and Arms Forest in Lone Rock Point in Burlington. I headed inland to discover more. Around Milton Pond and in the Milton Town Forest, on Westford Town Trails, and at Indian Brook Reservoir in Essex. Colchester Pond is kind of in the middle. The southeast corner of its natural area borders the northwest edge of Indian Brook Reservoir Park. There's now preserved contiguous forest from Indian Brook Reservoir up through the Milton Town Forest. The land around Colchester Pond is going back to forest now, but there were once farms and orchards and lumbering done here. So any stonework of the ancient variety found is likely to be a bit shattered and a bit scattered. Didn't see much in the way of stone at all at first. Then up on the northwest corner of the pond, I spotted a possible wing or fin stone perched on a boulder. Wing or fin-shaped stones are often associated with indigenous ceremonial stone landscapes in the northeast. As Manitou stones, they are found with stone rows and stone assemblages in New England and may represent effigy elements, great serpent iconography. The stones are often triangular shaped and somewhat flat. The wide side usually has a bit of a notch in the middle and sometimes flares out, a little like a projectile point on its side. This first one at Colchester Pond was on the thicker side. Sort of a tapering triangular pyramidal shape. The Sunseeker app showed a potential winter solstice sunrise alignment with the boulder, looking southeast across the pond toward Indian Brook Reservoir. I found a triangular shaped possible Manitou stone perched in the crack of a boulder on a ridge over that way, on the northwest side of the reservoir. No obvious alignments there, unfortunately. This winter solstice sunrise alignment is not definitive. Given the levels of activity seen in this area, the position of the stones could well have shifted over the years. Heading up the ridge on the pond's northeast side, I crossed a boulder wash. Or was it? Not exactly. Many of these stones were oddly shaped. A prominent stone upslope had a sort of protrusion on its top left, giving it a bit of a wing shape. A lot of these stones appeared wing-shaped. Some even possessed the look of possible feathering on their surfaces. Looking down slope, 
I spied a large wing-shaped stone a short ways down, and two boulders further down, back near the shore of the pond. This stone not only looked wing-shaped from upslope, but up close as well. Coming around to see it from below? Even more revealing. Getting close up showed what looked like feathers worked into the surface. Further down, near the pond, the first boulder's right side was covered in white. Many of the stones seemed coated by a white substance, which didn't appear to be lichens. My guess? Some sort of lime wash, or a lime, clay, and ash-based paint. Possibly added to give these stones the look of wings. This boulder, too, is shaped like a wing. Taller than me. These wing stones appeared to have tumbled down from above, maybe even the boulders. 
What would I find up on the ridge? An apparently planted triangular stone a short way off the path to the right caught my eye. Its edge looked worked. What was it pointing to? A curious looking ridge top assemblage made up of multiple stones with the look of a carved shape. Hard to capture in its entirety because of the trees in the way. It could be the wing of a great horned and feathered serpent. This even looks like it could have been the lower part of a larger assemblage. The stones from below, once on top and to the right above. The large-scale stonework I'm finding seems especially to occur on rounded ridges at an elevation which would have placed them along the shorelines of rivers, lakes, and seas toward the end of the last ice age. Wing and fin stones and others were added to embellish the look of the ridge and give it the aspect of a great horned and feathered serpent emerging from the deep. I climbed slightly higher and to the left. This next outcrop appeared to have been worked to resemble the serpent's head.
This ridge would have been on an island just offshore at the end of the last ice age in the days of the Champlain Sea. This possible effigy work is oriented towards the water. Were these seagoing people? What would it have looked like approaching land to find great horned and feathered serpents lurking on the ridges along the shore? The path led away from the pond, placing ridges between us and the water. Even these small ridges seem embellished, with boulders on top to create ridge fins, with stones on the side for more possible fins. A slight rise in elevation brought the trail past this sort of S-shaped stone, apparently displayed and perched in place. The bank behind it appeared to be reinforced by stones, a sort of short retaining wall. I've seen similar S-shaped stones alongside other possible large-scale Great Serpent stonework. Other curiously shaped stones and boulders appeared along the trail. Like this one, a white boulder. It looks like a stone backrest or husband pillow. That's what they're called. I looked it up. It also looks a bit like a wing.
there is this kind of complex split stone. The inside edge of the right stone has a curved chunk missing, while the top of the left stone seems to have a groove down its length. Interesting arrangement. also somewhat wing-like when viewed from the side. I spotted another, slightly thicker, wingstone with a triangular, pyramidal wedge shape, wider in back and tapering down in the front. This one's standing alone. Circling around the south end of the pond, the trail runs through open fields, and I was struck once again by just how beautiful a space this is. Not everyone will see what I'm seeing in the stonework here. I think it's possible large-scale Great Serpent stonework, which may be an earlier development of the ceremonial stone landscape work we see evidenced in stone rows and assemblages. Some might accuse me of pareidolia, the scientific name for seeing forms, which aren't really there, in inanimate objects, like seeing faces on cars or shapes in clouds. We do use our imaginations to see the land differently, but we do so applying knowledge of indigenous iconography, geology, and history. So it's informed imagination. That's always been a part of science. As Einstein noted, imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world. If you want to see more of this possible large-scale stuff, check out my videos on Eagle Mountain and Niquette Bay, or Raven Ridge, where I first saw this stonework and thought it was unique to that site. I've now, of course, found it in many more places. And possibly here. I'm Mike Luoma. Thank you for experiencing Colchester Pond with me.